Well, I think, Tyler, two and I, you and I talked two weeks ago, exactly two weeks ago, about the extent to which the market was at least technically overbought, that valuations had risen to levels we'd not seen in some time, the concentration of market value now, including Amazon, above a trillion dollars, five stocks accounted for 18 percent of the market cap of the S&P 500. And we talked about the likelihood of a five to 10 percent correction. Now, whether the coronavirus is a reason or an excuse remains to be seen. But clearly the market had been overextended. And, and we don't know now the extent to which this virus and, and Unish showed some extraordinarily stark numbers, how much of that spillover effect of weakness in the Chinese economy, which I would kind of compare in a strange way to the cocooning that happened here in the U.S. after 9-11. If you go back to that period in which the two weeks after 9-11, no one left the house for a month. No one traveled. And there was, a, you know, it had an impact on the U.S. economy at the time. Mm -hmm. It seems like something similar is going on here, but it may affect the entire global economy for a period of time that would reduce first quarter GDP and first quarter earnings estimates. Interesting analogy there. Michael, let me let me go through a couple of things. Were it not for Amazon, the S&P would be far worse than it is. Were it not for IBM, the Dow would be for worse uh, than it is. Uh, and as I look at the economic landscape, uh, the yesterday's GDP numbers in the United States were OK, but not great. The European numbers out this morning were not good at all. Uh, Italy and France in contraction. And uh, obviously China is slowing. The Chicago PMI now at the lowest level since December of 2015. Yeah. Are we in for more trouble here? Is this potentially a longer slide than just a transient one based on the coronavirus? Tyler, I think the answer is clearly yes. That we, there is the potential, a great potential, for a continued slide. Will it happen? We don't know yet. And I think the key is going to be the duration, essentially, of the, as Ron said, the, chi the, the Asian cocooning, the shutdown. We know that parts for automobiles aren't getting to Ford plants all of a sudden from that huge area in China that is responsible for a lot of those parts. So companies like Ford are going to have to start shuttering production once they run out of inventory to make uh, parts inventory to actually produce cars. We know that the airlines are doing it. We've seen three of the domestic airlines today, United, Delta, American, joined British Airlines and saying we're going to stop flights to China. So when you see this cocooning and this shutdown, we know that economic activity is going to face a significant headwind. It did happen during SARS. We saw it then, too, and a lot of airlines suffered. Northwest Airlines chairman told me uh, at that time, CEO was Doug Steenland, said it was hundreds of millions of dollars in top-line revenue at the time. So if this lasts, yes, it creates an economic headwind that will affect China first, but in this global economy is going to affect all of us. Will that drive markets lower? is the, you know, big question out there. Yeah. I think after a market run like this, you have to be cautious. Yeah. Ron, we've seen yields come off uh, pretty dramatically this week. We've seen the yield curve flatten, even invert yeah. in some, some places. Again, what's the bond market telling us? Well, I think that's a very important piece, Morgan, as, as you correctly point out. I mean, we now have 10-year yields below those of three-month yields for the first time in quite some time. The, the curve had steepened after the Federal Reserve lowered interest rates uh, in 2019. And so, we were concerned, you know, in the middle and latter part of last year about the, the message of that inverted yield curve portending a recession six to nine months down the road. This certainly recognizes the fact that global growth is now in question. And whether or not it also leads to an easier Fed is an open question as well, because we do have Jude Fed fund futures now pricing in a rate cut, something that really wasn't talked about much uh, so far this year, everybody assumed the Fed would be on hold for all of 2020 as we move towards the presidential election as well. And I think, as, as Sarah Eisen pointed out early this morning, it, and I thought this was an interesting observation, the fact that Bernie Sanders is now running neck and neck with Joe Biden creates another piece of uncertainty for the market on the political front that may help to be exacerbating this, this sell-off, at least in the short run. Yeah, Michael, I mean, even before the coronavirus and all the uncertainty we're seeing play out there, um, you know, you had all the issues around Boeing and 737 MAX and what the halt in production is going to mean to economic growth and those readings from a macro level here in the U.S. in the near term. Is it safe to say that at least for the first quarter, based on what we know now, uh, it's essentially a wash in terms of getting any kind of uh, proper, accurate economic reading? No. 
I think, Morgan, you're right. It's going to certainly cloud exactly what outcomes are, right? I mean, so this is going to cloud the, the, the earnings pictures and those reports that we get in April for the first quarter earnings are going to be, every one of them is going to be referencing this and how long it's lasted and really if it's going to have spillover for the rest of their years or not. I think that one of the things that I think Ron said, too, was part of the expectations here. What are market expectations? Market expectations were for the coronavirus to be kind of a nothing. Um, and while that may be true, thank goodness, in terms of mortality rates, we might be underestimating those economic headwinds. So more important than ever, ever look at your portfolios and find where you have exposure. Markets correct. They do go down. And owning companies with solid balance sheets and good returns on equity and cash flow becomes really important if this downturn lasts longer.